my body is providing everything this baby needs to to grow and to thrive. And it just is really is mind boggling to me and just amazes me. <laughs> so I, I feel like it just continues that experience of giving birth. Balloons, bazookas, boob, boobies, bosoms, boulders, cans, hooters, knockers, melons, honkers, jugs, rack, tatas, tits, torpedoes, guns, bust, doorknobs, coconuts, and our favorite one, the girls. Welcome to the All About Breastfeeding Show, where your host, Lori, highlights mothers just like yourself and goes beyond the surface questions and digs deep so they share not only their joys and happiness in their daily breastfeeding life, but also their pain and struggles and how they worked through them. Sometimes you just cruise along in your work days. They are all fun for me, and yet there are those days when I feel like I have hit the jackpot. Today, I had the pleasure of providing home visits to three mothers and helping them with breastfeeding. One of the moms was doing quite well with breastfeeding, and the other two were surely having some breastfeeding challenges, but I imagine in two to three days, they will also be doing quite well. The one thing all three had in common, though, is how incredibly sleep-deprived they were. Even though they have great partners who have been very helpful All three are having a hard time letting go of keeping up with a usual routine in the household. They are not taking the time to nap at all during the daytime, and by their own admission, are definitely getting cranky and fighting over stupid stuff with their partners. My jackpot? Today, who knew that my guest today was going to be talking about this very topic? I did share some words of wisdom of my own, and I will also definitely be sending them a link to this show and say to them, you need to listen to my guest today. She really goes into detail about the importance of taking care of yourself, especially during the first six weeks after the birth. And also she gives some great practical tips on how to go about doing this. It is my pleasure to introduce you, my All About Breastfeeding listeners, to a female entrepreneur who I look up to and have learned so much from. Natalie Ekdahl is host of The Biz Chicks, her own podcast. She is a wife and a mother of three children. You are really going to enjoy spending time with us today. Let's get started. Natalie Ekdahl, MBA, hosts the Biz Chicks podcast, where she interviews female entrepreneurs from around the world and provides training to business owners. She is a former management consultant and serial entrepreneur who leverages her corporate experience and graduate business education to help entrepreneurs confidently launch, build, and grow their businesses. As a busy wife and mom of three, Natalie takes a holistic view of her clients' lives and helps them build a business that matches their personal and professional goals. Natalie built a successful personal brand and platform at bizchicks.com from the ground up via her podcast, which was recognized by iTunes as a number one new business podcast in March 2014. She has been featured in Inc. Magazine, Huffington Post, and the Orange County Business Journal. Natalie also speaks nationally on the topics of team building and masterminding. And I first came to know Natalie from listening to her podcast, Biz Chicks, and I got turned on to you and I joined your Facebook fan group and have been a fan of you ever since and have watched you from the sidelines, watching your business grow. Thank you so much, Natalie, for being with me today. Thank you for having me, Lori. I'm, it's been so fun to get to know you through the BizTrix community and to watch you blossom with your podcast and business. So it's really fun to get to have this time with you today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And it is funny to feel like we... we we know each other, even though we haven't real met, met in real life. I know. Right? It's so true. And, and you know, when you listen to podcasts, all the podcasters I listen to, including you, I feel like they're my friends. I know. And I like one, one of the shows that you had. Uh, oh, maybe it was Katie or Marie who said that her daughter already recognizes your voice. No, It's really funny. Yeah, it was Maria. They're like, oh, yeah. that's there's your friend, your biz chick friend. 
<laughs> That's right. I thought that was so cute because she's driving around in the car and they just have no choice but to listen to you. I know. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, Natalie. Well, I would love for you to share a little background. I'd like to hear about what life was like for you in the family that you grew up in. Oh, sure. So my parents are still married and uh, my brother is 18 months younger than I am. And we were a very active family. My parents are both still very active people in fantastic shape physically and still do a lot outside and just to stay active intentionally. And my brother and I were in sports. So I would say kind of like most of our growing up years were centered around our sports activities. And my parents were very plugged into us. And my mom is a a teacher and a wonderful homemaker. And so she and just really great at creating memories and celebrating holidays. So for (laughs) she helps me too. She's really great with my kids. So she just was here we're recording this a little before Easter and she was here this, this last week, just the, yeah, just like a couple of days ago. And she colored eggs with my, my kids and I got to color a couple too. And the funny thing is, and I was reflecting with her, I said, you know, I've never had to like go to the trouble to figure out how to color eggs with my kids because you do it for me every year. My parents are really supportive and it was, I would say a really great childhood. I'm, I'm grateful for all the time and intention they took in parenting. Is that a little bit, is it, Hard for you to live up to the creativity of your mom. I'm I'm pretty creative too, but my mom is a hundred times better at homemaking than I am. So she's just so great at naturally like, you know, let's pick up the room before we move on to the next room. Whereas I'm my mind is kind of like let's do the next fun thing versus you know if I'm looking at the kitchen getting clean versus doing something fun with the kids, I might choose something fun with the kids, and then you know the kitchen does need to get clean, so. Uh, I do things a little differently than my mom. My house isn't probably as clean and tidy as hers was when she had little ones and even as, of course, as it is now. But yeah, but I really have learned from my mom, I would say. It was really nice to have that example. She did not grow up with um, with that example, and I still don't know how she you know, learned how to create what she created for us uh, because it was very different from what her childhood was. So I've been, I've been fortunate to just kind of uh, glean things from her and implement them in my home and, and to have her around us to support me. She's very supportive. Some people, it's just innate. My mother grew up in a very small apartment in Brooklyn with one younger sibling, and she wouldn't say her mother was anything out of the ordinary as far as cleanliness or creativeness or anything or organized of that nature. But my mother had five kids and she, you could eat off of her toilet bowl was my joke with her. Wow. And, and she raised five kids. Uh, but she was a different mother that I know that she loved all of us and she took very good care of us. She wasn't playing with us and doing activities with us. So she was very much organized the home well-fed kids, well-dressed kids, took all of us to where she needed. And so she did a fabulous job. And I've learned some of my organizational skills from her like you have with your mom. Yeah. And, you know, my mom didn't love to like, you know, it's hard for my mom to sit down and hang out. She definitely loves to sit down and talk to you. uh, But she doesn't want to sit. She didn't really sit and watch TV with us. She's not really into watching a lot of TV. So when we were like relaxing the afternoon watching TV, she would be getting everything going for the night and and organized. And she really, it's, and part of it, she says for her own sanity and probably this was how your mom was, is that having a nice home and things being kept up and organized, it's important to her. It makes her feel good. I really like to have a home that's kept up and organized, but I don't get as much enjoyment out of it as she does. And so so now I feel like it sounds like my house is like a complete mess. It's not, uh, but (laughs) no, 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 no. I know to my mom those standards that she set and that she created for herself. That's what I am looking, like you said, am I judging intimidated by that? I do see like, Oh yeah, my house isn't as clean as my mom's, but I'm okay with that. And I don't feel she's judgmental towards me, which is really great. It's a lot exactly like my mother too. It was more important for her to have everything working like clockwork than to sit on the floor and hang out with us. So yeah, I would say my mom struck a nice balance, which I probably could balance a little better with, you know, and it's hard also, I'm running a business from my home, which is hard to turn off. And uh, so a lot of times if I have a choice, if I have, if my kids are occupied and I have a choice to clean or to work on my business, I'm going to work on my business. 
And you know what? Just one little note, on, last note on that. Our moms never really, well, I don't know about your mother, but my mother, the word balance never really entered into her brain. She was just doing what she needed to do, whereas right now we have lots of talk about work-life balance, right? We do. We do. It's very different. So tell me a little bit, was there anything that you thought you would be doing when you were a little girl and dreamed about being a young woman and a little into your adulthood, what you felt you would be doing with your life and how that compares to what you are doing now? I definitely didn't dream about, I didn't dream about having a podcast, that's for sure, right? (laughs) I didn't dream about uh, running a business. I really dreamt about being a mom. And a lot of my childhood play centered around playing house and pretending I was a mom and that I had children. And uh, it was something that I always knew from a very young age that I wanted to have children. And it's interesting because my daughter right now, and of course she has little brothers, so uh, she's getting like the real life, this is what it's like to have little children <laughs> concept, uh, which I didn't I necessarily have. But she she's like, I'm not sure if I want to be a mom. You know, I, this, I can see how much work it is and I don't feel like super nurturing towards children. And I was, I knew at her age, I wanted to be a mom and, you know, and, and then, you know, when I was younger before that, I had my grandma actually made me beautiful rag dolls. She's an amazing seamstress. And so I had dolls handmade by my grandmother and she even made some that were like almost my size. So they were like life size dolls. Wow. And yeah, and then, you know, she would make them clothes. So I had these beautiful dolls that I could play with and that were soft too. And, um, you know, I knew they were from my grandmother and I would, you know, create whole scenarios about, you know, them being my children. And, and so, yeah, I think the thing I dreamt about most was having children. And then as I got a little older, like, more my teenage years, I dreamt about having working so I could afford to have someone help me take care of my home. So, <laughs> and I used to say, I'm going to have help taking care. Of well, home. that was very practical. Yeah, I, I was. And I do. And I have, I'm really blessed to have a nanny that helps me that we're actually recording this during the day right now. And she's here helping me. So she helps me with my children three times a week so I can, I can work because I'm not able to work with small children <laughs> around. And, and she also helps me around the house. So my house is stays in a better state of order because of Julie, who's my right hand man, dear. We're, we're going to get into your business a little more afterwards. But that is one of the things that I really love about you. And when you're talking to other women, and I see you, I hear you in podcast, and I see you posting, is that you are a true supporter of That it's okay, it's a sign of strength, it's something you need to do to get household help or to outsource for the things that perhaps you don't like doing and take away from your enjoyment of your life with your children, your family, or take away from your ability to run your business. And you're a huge supporter of that. I love that. Thank you. I I really am because if we look, if we have 24 hours in a day and we have sleep and we have work and it's again, those trade-offs, like I could be cleaning or I could be hanging out with my kids. I could, and of course we can, I do train my kids to do the different household tasks and I am doing loads of laundry here and there. And I am loading the dishwasher and emptying the dishwasher and cleaning the kitchen. And they see that, but I really am an advocate of looking at your whole day and figuring out how you can make it run best for you and that it's okay to, to get help. And even saying the word nanny, you know, a lot of people will say babysitter. And when I, I, I've grown a lot as a mother and just being more confident in who I am. So when I had a little bit of help when Aurora was little, I would say, you know, this is my daughter's babysitter. But I think the word nanny really encompasses, this is a partner in my family and my home. And she's a very important part of my family and our life. She's worked with me now for three and a half years. That's a long time to have someone in your home. And truth be told, she sees my children more than anyone else besides my husband and I. So she's a very important part of our family. And I, I don't want to call her a babysitter. She is, she is a nanny, which I feel kind of says more of what she does and who she is to us. It certainly does. And I'm thinking I see all of the uh, any of my audience who was a nanny or has a nanny or any nannies listening, like jumping up and down and say, yes, thank you so much for that acknowledgement. Yeah. And I think sometimes people feel like it sounds weird. I I hear other mothers feel like they don't want to say, well, this is my nanny. Like I feel like culturally, maybe it's just in my area. I don't know if it's across the country. And I don't I feel like in Britain saying you have a nanny is like 
part of what you have. Like, of course you have a nanny and that's a really revered uh, role. And so it's a role I really, really revere and I want to name it. And, you know, as I said, it describes what Julie is to our home. And how lucky for your nanny that you have that attitude towards her. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> she really is. I would like to take just a minute and have you do a little breathing exercise with me. Would you be willing to do that? I will do anything you ask me to do, Lori. Oh, yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So if you can just close your eyes for a minute and put your feet flat on the floor and uncross your arms and just take a nice deep breath in through your nose and through a little bitty hole between your lips, just slowly let the air out. And on your in-breath, slowly let the air in. And on the out-breath, just relax all of your facial muscles, your forehead, your cheek, your tongue, your jaw, and let the air out. And one more in-breath. And on the out-breath, just relax your shoulders, your arms, your hands, your thighs, and just relax. Okay, you could slowly open your eyes. I was about to take a nap, Lori. No, not yet. (laughs) (laughs) I know that's what I'm in jeopardy of doing to my guests, but I'd love to just, you know, we're just chit-chatting and going, and then I like to just take the energy and just kind of change it a little bit Mm -hmm. when we start talking about our newborns and babies and breastfeeding, and I just find that helps. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for that. I'm sure, I hopefully other people listening did the same as well. How wonderful. Thank you for that gift of of just resting for a moment in my day. You're welcome. Have you ever talked to your mom and asked her if you were breastfed? I have. So I was breastfed. And my impression, you know, when I was a first time mom was that my mom had breastfed for a very long time because she was part of La Leche League and she went to meetings and I would hear some stories about that. Uh, But my mom did breastfeed my brother and I, and I think she breastfed me for three months and my brother for about four months. Fabulous. So you heard her talking. She told you a little bit about her La Leche League meeting. Yes, she did. I would love for you to tell me a little bit about you and your kids in breastfeeding. So I know you have three kids, so uh, you could tell us their names and ages. And then once you tell us their names and ages, I would love for you to just go back and tell me if you remember what, if anything, you did to prepare for breastfeeding your first daughter, as in Was a breastfeeding class part of your childbirth class? Did you take a separate class? Did you watch videos? And perhaps maybe you attended La Leche League meetings beforehand, read books, anything that you felt of interest I would love for you to share. Sure. I knew I wanted to breastfeed, and I'm actually really grateful that my mom breastfed as well because I've watched friends who whose moms didn't breastfeed, and then there's a lot of I feel like I've heard a lot of stories where, you know, my friend's sharing with me, you know, my mom's worried that the baby's not getting enough milk because she can't see that the baby's getting enough milk. And, you know, she wants me to use a bottle because then we can make sure the baby's getting fed enough food, enough, you know, enough formula or, or breast milk here. So it's just really, I've seen both sides of it, you know, having a mom that, that breastfed and was very supportive of me wanting to breastfeed. To prepare, I did a few things. I am a big reader and researcher, and I was a little crazy as a new mom. It's very nice having a perspective of having kids at different, my kids are very different ages. Uh, so my daughter is 14. She's my oldest. Her name is Aurora. Tahoe is four. And Jet, he is 18 months. He's almost 19 months. So I have a big gap between Aurora and Tahoe and I've really grown as a woman and matured and relaxed into motherhood. So it's been kind of a gift to have that, that break. But as a new mom, I read almost anything I could read about having a baby, giving birth, taking care of a new baby. And so I did attend a breastfeeding class at my hospital. I remember reading some books on breastfeeding And then I also had a doula at my birth. Uh, I've had all of my births were natural births. And uh, Aurora was born in the hospital. Tahoe was born at home. And Jet was born at a birth center uh, with a midwife. 
And with Aurora's birth, I had a doula in the hospital. And so she was very supportive discussing breastfeeding with me beforehand and then also checking with me afterwards. And then I had great nurses in the hospital as well who were supportive. So that's interesting. You had a doula for all your births and yet you, and you also have an interesting history there. You gave birth at home. At the hospital, hospital, hospital home, first, birth center. home, and then a birth center. I would have done home again with Jet. I, that was my favorite experience was giving birth at home. But I couldn't wrap my mind around what I would do with Tahoe, who was two and a half at the time. And I didn't want to in the middle of the night or at like 6 a.m. have to like send him to a neighbor's house. So it just felt better for uh, Mark and I to leave and uh, to have someone come in here and watch him. But definitely giving birth at home was amazing. And I, I had a doula for the first two births, but I didn't really need a doula. I, I felt comfortable with uh, having my mom and my husband and then the midwife. And the midwife has a birth assistant who kind of plays a similar role to a doula, you know, or can. Uh, so I didn't have a doula for Jet's birth, my third. Did you have a, so you had a midwife in the hospital too? I had, no, I had a doctor in the hospital, but he was supportive of, of natural childbirth. He uh, was actually a backup physician for a midwife I had talked to during that kind of figuring out time of where I was going to give birth. Okay. Thanks for that. So I, I, what I love about your experience is that, you know, as women and moms, sometimes we tend to judge a little too harshly. And when you have a varied experience, it makes you that much more open-minded to when we're sharing what other people go through, and especially when you talked about birth and natural birth and home, hospital, birth center, doula, yes, doula, no, midwife, yes, <laughs> doctor, no, right? Yeah. So to be able to have all those varied experience really, I'm sure, helps you a lot when in relating when you're talking to other moms. I think so. I, I'm thankful that I haven't had complications I've had really uh, in general great pregnancies and, you know, relatively easy births. I know that a lot of women want to have an unmedicated birth and for various reasons that doesn't go how they want it to go. And I just don't, I don't really judge people. We want a healthy, happy baby at the end and help, you know, we want mom healthy and baby healthy. And if you get, that's the most important thing, how, how that happens is so personal and, and yeah. so, so varied based on medical issues too. Tell me, with everything that you did, think back to before Aurora was born, is there anything that you realized after the fact that you did beforehand that you felt was most helpful in with helping you breast in the early days of breastfeeding? I think definitely reading books helps me because that's how I learn. I'm a very visual learner. And uh, so reading just really gets, it gives me a comfort too that I can go back and if I had problems, I could go look look at things. And, and I actually did that with Tahoe. I was trying to figure out, you know, how do I need to prepare for this, this babe for nursing? I've already nursed a kid, so it should be super easy. But I thought, you know, I better read up a little bit on this. And I, I didn't want to buy another book. I'd gotten rid of all my baby stuff, baby, you know, knowledge books by then. And so I just went to the library and I found a couple books and I was so glad I had those because I did need to reference them in the first, you know, few weeks of, of nursing Tahoe. Yeah, that's what I, I definitely would recommend having a resource for yourself at home. And honestly, now, Lori, with how we have Skype available and, you know, I, I know a, a little bit about your business and what you do. If I was giving birth now, I would have a, a person like you on hand to help me. If I was committed to breastfeeding, uh, and that was what my plan was, I would want to have a lactation consultant on hand. So someone that it was I'm just thinking about how nice it would be not to have to be like drag your baby to the hospital and have a Skype call with someone and talk to them. So that wasn't really yeah. available then. If you needed help, you either had to hire someone to come to your home or go to the hospital, you know, 14 years ago. Yeah. And when I had my first, there was <clears throat> no help available. And so frequently when I'm meeting with uh, moms, if they bring their mothers with them who are maybe around my age or mm -hmm. a little less, they will frequently say, man, I wish I had one of you when I was nursing my baby. And I look at them and I say, me too. I wish I had one of me too. Yeah. I mean, if you think about historically and even in other cultures now, people are growing up in more of a village 
experience where you're seeing women breastfeeding around and you're seeing that as being natural and you it'd be natural to ask your mom or grandma or aunt or neighbor for some help. And we don't really have that. Yeah, I guess I should mention another person that impacted my breastfeeding journey is my Aunt Kathy. And so she is my mom's younger sister. And they are, let's see, I think they're 14 years apart. So she's almost like in between, her age is in between my mom and I. And I got to see her nurse, my nephew, and she's very committed to breastfeeding and very comfortable, you know, breastfeeding around other people. So I would, I was probably in high school and, you know, I saw her breastfeeding when I was, you know, end of high school that I think that impacted me, although I wouldn't you know, pull that right out of the hat. But as we're talking about breastfeeding, her kind of image of her nursing, my my cousin came to mind. And so that was another uh, person I saw that impacted my journey towards breastfeeding. And, you know, you bring up a very good point, because now I, I ask mom specifically what helped you the most books, classes, videos, etc., because we actually do have that gap in what you experience. We have this huge gap in growing up and seeing other female members of our family just breastfeed their babies on a regular everyday basis. And so when it's our turn, if we haven't had an opportunity to witness that on a regular basis, it's become something very foreign to us that we have to totally learn and read about rather than just seeing it as part of the regular family life, Mm -hmm. which I think can help a lot. So it's interesting that you you thought about that because that actually winds up exactly in the place where I said it does. It's like somewhere in the recess of the brain that was part of the fabric of your life at that point seeing that. And I can't help but think what a positive impact that has on you and other women who do get to see that even though we don't draw upon that immediately. It does. And and I know that I've impacted my daughter. You know, she's she's seen me nurse her two brothers and you know, I think even my my four year old will have probably some early memories about me nursing his little brother. You know, I hope that leads to support later on for whatever wherever their journey takes them. Uh because I, I am so grateful to have been able to breastfeed my kids and the bonding I've had with them has been really beautiful. It's been an overall great experience for me. Taking a little break so I can share this info with you. I am really psyched to be able to share this next piece of news with you. My regular listeners are very familiar at this point with Momentum, the organization that I talk about on each show. You know the one that I say, save my life as a new mother the organization that helped me find other mothers who were new at this whole mothering thing. They became my people. They helped me navigate that first year of motherhood and continue to mother me as I had more kids and my need for support through their toddler years and kindergarten years and elementary school years just kept being needed. I made lifelong friends and they were so helpful that I am doing all I can to continue to support the organization. I want Momentum to continue to thrive, and I want you, my All About Breastfeeding audience, to experience just some of what Momentum is all about. The ladies of Momentum have agreed to give my listeners a 14-day trial membership so you can see what this mother center thing is all about at no cost to you. Just hop on over to allaboutbreastfeeding.biz forward slash podcast. You will see a link from Momentum, it's in blue, and you just click it on and it will bring you to the page for you to sign up for your free trial. Honestly and truly, there's absolutely no cost to you. This is just a great opportunity for you to enjoy the discussion groups and the blogs and webinars and educational pieces that are available for free for you. I will have a link to this in the show notes. And now, back to the show. So tell me a little bit about you can it's always fun when I'm talking to a mom who has several kids. So you always get to choose. I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, the really great parts about breastfeeding and which baby you felt it just came real easy to from the very beginning, if it did, 
and also to talk about a struggle that you had that you did get through that you feel would be valuable for another mom to hear. Sure. Well, the the just t- taking the three together, what has surprised me is how each relationship is different, nursing each of them. I would have thought that if you've nursed one kid, nursing the next one would be the same experience. So Aurora was my favorite baby to nurse because she was fast. She would latch on, drink her milk. I would say she'd get in and get out. That's what I used to say. She does, <laughs> nice and easy. She does her business. And I remember, you know, thinking and talking to friends, you know, my friends are saying, oh my gosh, I'm having to sit here for like a half an hour and that's just one side. I mean, I'm nursing for like an hour and then they, I get them to sleep and then it's like literally like an hour later I'm nursing again and I, I'm thinking, I was very judgmental as a new mom and I'm way less judgmental now. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, you know, I don't know why, why it's taking you so long. Aurora would nurse at most like 10 minutes when she was, was a baby and she was getting plenty of nourishment and growing and thriving and everything she needed to be doing, she was doing, but she was really fast and my milk comes out really fast too. So, so are you thinking, what is wrong with those other moms and babies? <laughs> yeah. And then I got Tahoe who liked to linger and hang out and had, you know, some minor latching issues that we had to work on initially. But I remember thinking, I cannot sit here for a half an hour. I am going to go crazy. <laughs> I'm so thankful we had Netflix and I decided that it was my time to just binge watch a few shows while he nursed and just relax. When I was a brand new mom with Aurora, I wouldn't even watch TV while she while I was nursing her because I thought it was going to be bad for her. So uh, <laughs> plus, why bother in the end? Because by the time you turn on a show, she's done. She would have been done anyway. So with Tahoe, he really lingered, and then Jet had a lot of latching issues, and I had a lot more soreness with him. And it was hard because then I have a toddler around, you know, who doesn't understand like why we have to sit and wait while the baby eats. And, you know, he's like climbing on my shoulder. But <laughs> my biggest struggle with was with Jet and biting. So he bit me a lot. <laughs> and it was really, really painful. He got teeth very early at four months. That is early. Yeah. It was actually something made me think about. If he had taken a bottle, he may have gone to the bottle, but he wouldn't take a bottle. But it was, I was, I said, I would say, I feel like I'm nursing a vampire because he was biting me and I didn't know really how to handle it and what to do. Basically, I ended up starting to learn. A, it was kind of, he would bite me more at the end of the nursing session when he was going to be latching off. And so then I would unlatch him before he would bite his way off. But it it was it really hurt, and I would scream. It, I mean, it would catch me off guard, and it, it, you know, every once in a while, people, my husband would be like, "Are you okay? I heard you scream." I'm like, he bit me again. Now, interestingly enough, sometimes when babies do that and their moms scream, it freaks babies out so much they then experience a nursing strike. Did you ever experience that with him? No, he just didn't care. He, he, he really just, didn't care. Yeah, he and he had a biting issue. Around, he actually just bit me again recently on my, he bit me on my arm this week. He just occasionally bites and he, for a while, that was his defense with, uh, I would say when he was like one to two or one, to, he's not two yet, one, when he was right around one or yeah, like nine months to 14 months, he was biting a lot, his brother, cause that was his defense. Like, you take this toy away from me, I will bite you. So it's been yeah. something kind of we've been dealing with him all along. He's a, he's a biter. That's what he is. So he's a biter. Yeah. So and it showed up. It, it reared its ugly head. Uh, early but no, me screaming didn't. I, he would cry. It would scare him. But it didn't make him not want to nurse or um or not bite me again. So would you say that with him biting, like I, I you, you said that if he took a bottle, you would have just given him a bottle. So that might have been an instance where you felt that you just wanted to give up with the biting. Definitely. Definitely. So it was just really hard. But I, I also really, I also know how convenient nursing is. And so it's not something I stop uh, on a dime because I, I love the convenience of having my children's nourishment wherever we go. I really love the bonding experience of it, the just sitting there and having that time that's just with them. And it's uh, so it's something I'm I'm very committed to. So I've been able to get through some of these things here and there. 
And it sounds like you figured out a, tr- a few tricks of the trade, at least one of them being recognizing that he was more likely to bite when he was pretty much done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Lovely little babies, aren't they? <laughs> they are. <laughs> So what has been, what do you feel overall has been the best thing about breastfeeding for you? You mentioned the convenience and, and getting to cuddle and the bond. And is there anything else that you would, any other words you have to say about breastfeeding that you feel that you're glad that you kept with that commitment even during times when you felt like you might have wanted to quit? I feel like it's an extension of the magicalness of giving birth to a child. Like we grow something from nothing in our bodies. And it comes out of us and it's a human. <laughs> and then I provided the only nourishment my chi- my child got until they started having some solid food. And just to realize like my body is providing everything this baby needs to, to grow and to thrive. And it just is really is mind boggling to me and just amazes me. <laughs> so I, I feel like it just continues that experience of giving birth. It does me too. And I've taught childbirth classes for a good 20 years. And when I would talk about what I call the amazing placenta and the amazing, just the miracle of, you know, you start off with this little blastocyst, a, a, a cell, a blastocyst, it turns into a fetus. And like, how cool is that, that you're just walking around doing your everyday stuff while this, your body is growing organs for the, you know, it's like, lungs and a heart and stomach and like isn't that crazy yeah i was at an event and i don't know how this came up but someone made a joke and i said look i'm always multitasking you guys are just sitting there i am sitting here making a human (laughs) (laughs) so um it's just incredible really it is and i think you know you can start to take it for granted and especially as you have multiple children you get busy with life and not as focused on like the actual moment to moment of the pregnancy but Growing a baby in your body is amazing that we can do that. And it makes me so grateful to be a woman and then nursing because I've had my experiences have been, you know, relatively easy. I only ever had, I know a lot of women struggle with breast infections and mastitis and all different things that go on and, and even, you know, issues with their nipples. And really I only with Tahoe, I got a, a slight infection just once. It was like a block duck is what it was. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And I felt like flu and feverish for a day or two. And then we were able to, I was able to um, resolve that. And, uh, but other than that, my experiences have been, you know, relatively easy. Now it's, it's, uh, it's not fun that he was biting, but actually when you say that, about how you had a relatively easy time. It actually is pretty incredible considering he started biting at four months old. Yeah, Jet, yes, for sure. Yeah, Tahoe, I, I joked that Tahoe could have nursed as long, you know, I really ended, I was done, ready to end nursing. He got to nurse for 20 months. I don't know if I've said that yet. I, so Aurora, I nursed for 10 months, and Tahoe, who's now four, I nursed for 20 months, and Jet, I nursed for 17 months. And Tahoe and was- Jet was just recently weaned, right? He was just recently weaned. Yeah. And Tahoe was my, he was such a polite nurser. You know, I told you Aurora, she would really chomp on when she latched on, but then she got in and out. And then, you know, Jed, I had to always worry I was going to get bitten. And Tahoe (laughs) was just so polite. He, his latch was so soft. And I mean, I think he maybe bit me once or twice accidentally. And it was all like, you know, his teeth hurt, but he was just the sweetest nurser. I could have kept nursing him longer. What I really take away from your sharing your experiences is, is exactly what you had said earlier and that you think you, you nurse one baby, you got it going on, you're pretty sure of, you know, what to do. But the always interesting thing is, is that you may even know what to do, but then you, you give birth to this baby, this little human being who's different than his siblings. And for some of us, it is like starting all over, at least in the beginning with each kid, because they have different personalities, different nursing styles, and it's just different. I think it's probably a precursor for parenting in general. Do you think, Lori? 
<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> because you might think you have one figured out and then and you're like, I've got this. And then all of a sudden you realize you may not. And I can just imagine how, you know, it's, it's really fun to, you know, now Aurora's 14. I've, we've been through a lot, you know, just in this short time and we're entering a, you know, challenging time of parenting. Uh, she's very strong willed. She's very intelligent, amazing young woman. And I can, you know, we were chatting before we got started that this is not going to be an easy next few years. And it's something I've shared publicly, something I've shared privately with her too. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but as I think you can really, uh, take that, uh, what you said about how nursing, each nursing relationship is different because they're different people and yes I am technically the same but I'm I am also I'm also different too you know when I had Aurora I only had her uh you know and then I had Tahoe and I I had him and I'm taking care of Aurora and then you know Jedi he's got two other two other siblings and his own person they all have their own personalities and and it makes I don't know why I didn't think that they'd be different but but they were all different experiences yeah, because we're just giving birth to another baby, you know, and, and so, but thanks for reminding me that because on one hand, I do feel like we are the same in that, oh, I'm already a mother and I've already nursed a baby. And yet you really qualified that and really extrapolated the other part, which I actually do frequently talk about also is that I am, I, I was a different mother to my first than I was to my second than I was to my third. And thank goodness. Yes. Because you're, you're learning and you're growing. And Alicia had me all the time to herself, but Jesse totally did not, wow. you know, and then by the time I had the third, even less. So I, I am a different mother to them, each each one of them. And so thanks for reminding me of that. Yeah, too. and the second and third have to come along to, you know, wherever the first one is or second one is. So, you know, Aurora, I pretty much got to nurse her wherever I wanted to, like usually at home in the rocking chair. And, you know, the other two I've nursed in public restrooms at dance competitions. So <laughs> and very strange places. So just to find a moment of privacy. Yeah, there's no just sitting nicely mm-hmm. in their room, no. in the chair with everything. You just get up and go. Yeah, they have to be part of wherever the whole family's going. And so, yeah, it's been, it, it's, it is true. You are a different mother to each child, partially because of their birth order, but also because you're evolving and changing as a woman and as a mother too. So I really want to thank you so much for sharing and it's just so interesting hearing about every individual mother's breastfeeding experience. And while I didn't know you in the very early days of uh, breastfeeding, Jet, it was interesting coming on board of your podcast shortly after you did give birth. And what amazed me so much, I was I was definitely thinking about your breastfeeding and just a life as a mother of three and starting a new business. So mm. I don't necessarily know if you want to go back that far. You can let me know. But I do want to hear you talk about the business that you're doing and if there's anything that you feel my listeners would find helpful as far as growing a business while breastfeeding a baby that would that you think would might be funny or of interest or of help you can kind of throw that in there too but i really want to hear about your business and what you're doing now well i uh, i coach other women entrepreneurs in their journey and i'm really blessed to have i just i just literally realized this yesterday i have an international business now because i can work with women just like you can lori wherever they are with the power of technology and skype and video calls so I had a client just this week that's in Israel. And wow, so I was like, very how cool. cool is it that I can, I can work from home and coach someone on their business and they are in a completely different country and time zone and culture. And it was really kind of in a very exciting moment for me. I tried to play it cool on the call. I'm like, yeah, you're in Israel. I'm in California. <laughs> you know, I was like, I did say, I mean, it was pretty exciting. I haven't worked with anyone in Israel before. I also host paid masterminds, which are where small groups of women come together and help each other with their businesses in a structured format. And I facilitate those. And I have a client in the Caribbean and then clients across the United States and those, and then another one in Canada. So again, those are have kind of like an international mix too. So it's been a really exciting journey to, um, to be able to do this kind of work, the work I did before I had my daughter had a lot of similarities in that I was uh, doing consulting work for businesses, but I had to travel to their site. So I was 
gone four or five days at a time traveling to work with clients. And so I'm really great, grateful that I don't have to travel to work with these amazing people. I can do it from my home. One of the things that I have done for myself and that I, a gift I gave myself when I had Jet was that I continued to have my nanny here and have her take care of Tahoe uh, while I was enjoying that bonding period of Jet. And really getting to settle into getting to know who he was as a baby and working on our nursing relationship and just getting to, to rest and kind of be taken care of by other people. I feel like a lot of women try to do too much when their babies are really small and bounce back too quickly. And I've learned from people in other cultures. I was been really grateful to get to learn from some women. Um, at my church that are Asian and they all actually have like a period of confinement, whether they want it or not <laughs> in their culture. And the, the mother or mother-in-law comes and stays with them and literally does all of the household work and takes care of, of all the cooking. And they even have specific foods that they must eat. But one thing that they believe in their culture is, is that if you don't take care of yourself after you have your baby, and allow your body to heal and allow yourself time to relax and bond with your baby. As you become an older woman, it will affect your like body and your bones as you are an aging. And I've never, I never heard anything like that before. So I, uh, you know, I'm a go getter. I want to get stuff done. I want to make stuff happen, but I really gave myself a maternity leave to enjoy my new baby. And it's, it's hard because there was a lot going on in my family and I'm not saying I wasn't <laughs> out doing stuff, but I, I was taking time to take naps and nurse Jed in bed and fall asleep with him, you know, in the middle of the day. And, uh, and so I think that's, I, I kind of, I share like looking back that that's the part of that story of that time. And none of my kids sleep through the night early. They take forever to sleep through the night. <laughs> and so I don't get a lot of sleep and, and I need sleep. And so I have to take care of myself during the day. And so my business got put a bit on hold. I did, I wasn't doing client, any client work during enjoying a maternity leave. You know, when you're an entrepreneur, <laughs> you're not paid. You're not given a paid maternity leave. So I guess that's one maybe thing that I could offer. Uh, women is that we do need some time off to allow our body to heal after giving birth and to, you never know what's going to happen. Like, is your baby going to be healthy? Are you going to be feeling good? Where are your hormones going to be at? How is breastfeeding going to be going if that's what you decide to do? And so giving ourselves a gift of that has been giving, doing that for myself has been really great. And just helping my friends through that. I have, you know, some friends who think that I have one friend in particular, she thought, you know, she wouldn't really need a maternity leave. And she realized she found out that she did. <laughs> so she had to change some things in her, but she's also an entrepreneur in her business so that she could have a maternity leave. I'm actually in this really great private Facebook group of other female entrepreneurs who they're online entrepreneurs and they've had a baby in the last year or so. When we started the group, it was like the last year or so. And now there's new mommies coming in and it's, it's very interesting how people are, are realizing that we need, we do need to take some time off and take care of ourselves after we give birth. Yeah, and I really thank you for sharing that because as a, a childbirth educator, I've been a birth doula and now as a lactation consultant, that is probably one of my biggest struggles with, with women who do have maternity leave, but they're afraid to take it or they just don't want to take it. And for entrepreneurs who feel that they can't take it or they just really have unrealistic thinking about what life is going to be like after the baby. They think two or three weeks and I'll be back to snuff. And it's not that I want to be a Debbie Downer when I'm talking to them prenatally, but I do try and share with them that it, it may be a little rough. You know, things are hard at the end of the pregnancy. I mean, you're growing a baby, then you're giving birth, never mind the whole emotional aspect. And, and what if they do have a difficult birth? What if they do have a cesarean section? You know, so they really have to plan for that and give themselves permission. But even what I say is even in the best of circumstances, let's say you feel great and everything's going beautifully, that I like the way that you put it. I think I'm going to steal that from you if it's okay to give yourself the gift. I like that, that you put it that mm -hmm. way. Women really need to 
carve out that period of time and just assume that they're going to need it rather than not take it and figure out how to, like you said, you had a friend, and well, now what do I do if I had a rough time and I do need extra time at home? So I really like to think of it in terms of giving themselves a gift to just, just be, be with your baby. Yeah, you know, especially with my third, I knew that Jet's my last baby and I won't get this time back again. And I really wanted to savor that time. But I also know that giving birth and time after I've learned, it takes a lot out of you. And even if, you know, I, I tend to be pretty healthy and, and fit and exercise during pregnancy, but I, I need to rest. It takes a lot out of you to get a baby yeah. out of you. And it then, does. you know, and then the hormones, the lack of sleep, and you don't know what kind of temperament your baby's going to have. You might have that angel baby that sleeps and, you know, nurses sleeps, goes to sleep, and and you're done. But other babies, they actually want you to hold them and rock them and walk around with them or they have tummy issues and they have colic and you just don't know what you're going to get and uh, or how the hormonal changes that you experience and the lack of sleep. I cannot I cannot stress enough how the lack of sleep builds on you. And <laughs> I always tell people if you are not napping, if you're not resting and taking naps that first six weeks, when you hit six weeks, it is going to hit you like a ton of bricks and you are going to have some health issues. It will come back to haunt you, not taking care of yourself at the beginning. You know, and I'll, I'll hear people say, well, I don't nap or I have so much I have to get done. I can't nap. But I really feel like if you especially take care of yourself for that first six weeks, then you kind of start to get on the other side of things. And then when you get to 12 weeks, I feel like that's where you kind of hit your groove as a new mom. Mm -hmm. At least for me, you kind of have figured out <laughs> this new routine, what this baby is like integrating into your your family, whether you were just you and your partner or just, you know, you and and you had other other siblings, you kind of start to get a little groove and see and they're starting to sleep a little bit better. And you start to see a little bit of a light. <laughs> were you were you ever so tired that you know, you definitely weren't drinking, but you felt drunk? Oh, goodness. Like, like you just like you're trying to think and and put one foot in front of the other. Yeah, and I felt definitely conversation in a fog. Like I get into like a fog. It's really, you know, you power through and you do what you have to do. But once my children start sleeping through the night, my brain comes back to start working <laughs> full time. Like literally that first year, my brain wasn't functioning where it is now. And literally when he started sleeping, like when I got my first full night of sleep, I said to my husband, I'm like, watch out world because Natalie's back. Like <laughs> my brain, my full brain power is now back. <laughs> if anybody in your family thought they were getting away with anything before then, like watch out now. Yeah, because I couldn't concentrate as well as I can now. I don't think anyone can when they're not sleeping. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I definitely have felt like it's hard to concentrate, hard to focus for long periods of time. And so Absolutely. just doing things in short bursts was working better for me during that time. Natalie, as always, we could probably chat all afternoon, but we I know you got to do the mommy thing and pick kids up. I so I, I need to let you go. Um, I would love for you to just take a moment, though, if you have, to share how my All About Breastfeeding listeners can get in touch with you. Absolutely, Lori. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun to uh, talk less business and more babies. I love. Oh, you're welcome. I love talking about motherhood and intentional motherhood, and and just it was really fun to to do that with you. But you can reach me at uh, my website is bizchicks.com, and I spell chicks with an X, so it's b i z c h i x dot com. And you can actually email me nat at bizchicks.com if I can be of service to you or if you have questions for me and I can be helpful, I would love to. So it's nat at B-I-Z-C-H-I-X dot com. And great. I will also put a link if you like to your wonderful Facebook group in my show notes. Absolutely. Too. Yes, I have a Facebook group called The Coop and uh, that's where women entrepreneurs or women who are interested in being entrepreneurs gather and we share resources and support each other. Lori's in there all the time. I'm in there all the time and it's a really fun place to connect. Natalie, thank you so, so very much. I'm thrilled that you were here with me today. I learned a ton and I'm going to let you go. Thank you, Lori. Before I end, I have three topics I would like to end this show with. The first item is, 
I love getting email and reviews from you, my listeners. The next best thing for me to do would be able to get to talk to some of my listeners and hear your feedback about the show. What are you liking? What do you want more of? Your thoughts on what I can do to make the show better and any additional thoughts you have. If talking to me is something you would like to do, just go to allaboutbreastfeeding.biz slash contact. Fill out the form and just put the word feedback in the comments section and I will send you an email so we can work out a time to chat. The second item is an offer to pregnant moms. There's no reason for you to have unanswered worries or concerns about breastfeeding. Many have said that you would have liked to have the opportunity to talk to me before your baby was born. So you could go over certain things that may have been troubling you about breastfeeding. Questions about maybe your health, medication you're taking, maybe breast surgery you had, your nipple anatomy. Perhaps you have fears or anxiety about breastfeeding and you feel it would be helpful to talk it out before your baby's born. Some mothers just have a bunch of questions that could not be answered in your regular breastfeeding class because of time or privacy. Talking through things can help you clear the way emotionally for an excellent start with breastfeeding. If you would like to Skype me, all you need to do is go to allaboutbreastfeeding.biz slash Skype to schedule your online prenatal consult. The third and last item is a reminder about my fabulous online breastfeeding mothers group for you to join. We are meeting for eight Wednesdays starting May 11th. There is only room for 10 moms. So if you want to join, check out allaboutbreastfeeding.biz support for details about the group, what we're doing, and the dates, and how you can get involved. Until the next show, this is Lori saying goodbye.